Imagine a scenario where a technician is monitoring a gas pipeline and is tasked to make a call on whether pressure inside a pipe joint can be increased. Using temperature and load sensors, they know the operating temperatures and, pre and pretension in the boats. However, to make an informed decision, they may need to run an FE simulation to assess the scenario before making a call. But they may not have the luxury to carry a device bigger than a mobile or a tablet PC on field, which are typically not powerful enough to run intense computations. Let's explore this situation more from the perspective of developing a web app. This aforementioned situation and workflow could be implemented on a web app. So the operator could provide the inputs, run the simulation on a remote server, and request the relevant results using a mobile device that will help them in making the call. Also, the operator need not be familiar with the simulation workflow to run the analysis using right setup. And the simulation products are powerful and computation intensive engineering tools. They often require high-end hardware and well-trained users which may impact the accessibility and scalability. With the introduction of PyAnsys, that includes Python APIs and other modules compatible with ANSYS products, there's an opportunity for developing web apps, which can resolve issues with scalability and accessibility. To learn how this is achieved, let's take a moment to understand web app and its architecture. A web app is a program that is stored on a server and executed remotely by a user from another device via internet. Generally, a web browser is used to execute this program, provide inputs, and read output. Broadly speaking, any website that has built-in functionality is considered a web app. For instance, a blog page with some text and images is considered as a website. However, it becomes a web app when we add additional functionality, such as buttons for recording likes or sharing to other platforms or to post a comment. There are several types of web apps that we use daily. For instance, we use email apps to access emails hosted on a remote server, read and respond to them. Similarly, we use social media apps to access and share text and other media with users worldwide. E-commerce platforms from which we purchase products and services are another class of web apps. Even a simple online calculator is a good example of a web app. The common theme among all these apps is that one can use a browser to execute a program on a remote server to access and manipulate data. Now let's extend this to modeling and simulations and see how web apps can be helpful. We could run large simulations on remote servers using portable devices via web apps. In addition to that, we can use web apps to access portions of the data generated by simulation from remote servers without having to transfer large files. These two aspects improve the accessibility of simulations. A well-planned and developed app could also condense complicated simulation workflows into user-friendly interfaces, so users who are not familiar with the workflow can still use them properly. This way, the web apps can help in scaling the use of simulations to more users. Now, let's use a simple web app to understand its architecture based on its functionality. Revisiting the web app for gas pipeline analysis that we discussed earlier, here's a simple interface. What you see is called the front end or client of the web app. Over here, we see that this page is loaded by visiting a specific location. Once loaded, the operator can provide inputs such as internal pressure, the bolt preload, and the thermal load that the equipment is exposed to. After providing all the inputs, they can hit solve to run the program on a remote server which is known as the backend or host. The program takes the inputs provided and runs the simulation. When it finishes solving, it will automatically return the results of interest, which are predefined in the web app workflow and outputs back to the front end. The communication between the front end and the back end is enabled by a web framework. The front end, back end, and the web framework constitute the basic architecture of a web app. Typically, languages such as HTML, CSS, or JavaScript are used in developing front-end of the web app, and scripting platforms such as Java, Ruby, or Python are used in the back-end. Since Python is a popular choice of scripting language for most users, 
several web frameworks have been developed on Python platform. As a result, popular Python packages that are designed to handle large data and scientific computing can be used in developing backend of advanced web apps. With ANSYS flagship products now available in Python environment via APIs, they can be integrated in the backend to develop web apps for simulations. With PyANSYS technologies, we can interactively query additional information with an open session. So it allows development of a responsive app, not just one that provides static output. This concludes the video on basic architecture of a web app with Python and its modules, including PyANSYS modules integrated into the backend.